the shape of that ball. Um, you might not think it's a conventional shape for a fruit bowl. There's a reason for that, um, which will become evident to you um, when we start using the CNC machine on the inner side, which will give it the fourth dimensional look. All right. the sort of thing you end up with after um, taking it off the lathe and I've done quite a bit of sanding on the lathe as well and now it's time to scallop out the inside with the CNC machine and give it that 4D look okay so we've, um, we've got to the stage now where we can scallop the inside out and make the fourth dimension <laughs> Uh, part of this bowl. Um, now what I need to do first is uh, we're, because this is a circular object we uh, do things a little bit differently. If you remember if it's um, uh, a normal piece of work that we put on here any other shape other than a circle uh, we start at uh, the front side uh, left edge or corner uh, which is our, our start point for the program. Uh, in this case with circular uh, objects, uh, it's a dead center. So what we do is we zero the computer in the dead center of the material. So that's what we're doing right now. I'll just mention at this stage, it's probably good work practice as you're using the pendant to orientate the pendant and yourself in front of the machine and operate it from there because you can actually get confused if you're coming from one side of the machine and start operating the, the, the pendant you can it's possible to forget yourself and uh, go the wrong direction uh, in fact what I do is uh, I actually orientate my computer screen and com the, the, the mouse and keyboard um, in relation to the machine as well. I'll just swing the camera around and show you that. See it's orientated in the same direction so there's less likelihood of um, actually making mistakes. So uh, having said that I hope I don't make a mistake now. Now here we go. So we'll just center this and zero it. I'm uh, using a nice, just a nice pointy tool there to give me the, like a, a, a marker. Let's take it down a little bit. Forward. Okay. Happy with that. Happy with that. Not only have I got a little pilot hole drilled in the centre to indicate the centre to me, uh, I've actually got. I don't know whether you can, the camera's picking that up. I've actually got uh, penciled lines on there giving me the centre as well. I did that to be able to find the centre to put the faceplate for the lathe on that. Okay, so it's, I'm just centering the X and Y at the moment. Just X, Y, because this is slightly raised here that I'm going to manually, with the machine, machine this off the same height as this. And then I shall zero the the uh, z-axis, then off to the one side here. I've actually got this um, connected to the machine. I put double-sided tape on the base of it, double-sided tape around the edges, and I've used um, these metal plates and gaffer tape uh, to hold it down. The trick is a little bit at a time. Right, I've 
I've just uh, taken off that uh, bit of a boss there. Um, you can probably see this isn't exactly square. Uh, there's probably half a mil difference to this side and what there is this side. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to scallop the outside, uh, the inside out anyway. Um, I've loaded the um, G card for the, the roughing operation. This is a 12 mil, uh, three fluted end mil. And um, that should do the job nicely. Just run into a small problem that I pretty well knew I was going to run into is that if I put, now put this um, three mil ball nose tool in, um, when I'm trying to, or when the machine is machining down the side wall, uh, I'm in danger of allowing the the nut of the chuck here uh, grinding into the side wall. Uh, because I can't extend this tool far enough out from the, the, the nose of the spindle. So what I'm going to do is simply make uh, an extended tool. Okay, what I've actually done is I've got a piece of scrap steel and I've just cleaned it up a bit in the lathe. And um, now this is one of the, the little th uh, th 3 mil ball nose, actually it's not three mil, it's, it's actually, um, so it's we're, what we're going to do, we're going to put a, pot, um, put a pilot hole in the centre here, we've got the call centre drill, Okay, you'll notice <coughs> that I've gone slightly over size, um, so I've got a small chamfer here. Um, the reason for that is when I attach this to the inside of it, uh, when I've drilled it out, um, I'm going to um, either silver solder or, or solder um, this into this. Um, it just gives an area for the molten metal to pool and gives a better grip. So um, we'll drill it out and get on with that. Hope the camera's picking that up. Um, I've just finished um, soldering now, or actually silver soldering, the um, three mil bull nose uh, cutting bit into the extension that we've uh, that I've just made. So um, I'll let that cool off gently and um, all being well it should uh, sort the problem out.
finish uh, of this. Uh, it's left it a little tiny bit furry here, here, and on the back of here. Might have been because of vibration. Um, not really sure. So what I've done is I've reprogrammed to recut this um, 90 degrees out of phase. So in other words, instead of coming back and forth running uh, in the X direction, uh, it's running in the Y direction and doing, doing the same cut. I hope you've enjoyed this video for the uh, 3D, 4D bowl. Um, next video that I'll produce is all about combustion nail guns, or as they're, they're known as impulse nail guns. And um, my particular development of a supercharged version. Till next time. Bye from me.